and welcome to the Master and Drum Whiskey Room. My name is Jason C and today we have a special episode about my top 10 whiskeys to try before you die. This was a challenge put forth by Robin Whiskey in the Six to myself and other whiskey tubers out there to create our own lists and make a video for all of you out there. Now, I'll leave the links below in the description to check out those other awesome lists. Now trying to come up with such a difficult list had some challenges but there were some ground rules that helped a lot. Rule one, has to be a whiskey that we've tried before. Rule two, cannot be a single cask or independent bottling. Rule three, can't be discontinued. Rule four, cannot exceed over 25 years old. And rule five, list the subject to change and not definitive. This list will surely change based on upcoming and unknown whiskey tastings in my future. I also want to mention that this list is not in any specific order. All these whiskeys are amazing to me and I've been lucky to have either tried or found a bottle of these whiskeys on this list. So let's get started. So first up is Talisker 18. Now this is a whiskey I tried for the first time very recently and fell in love on the first sip. This is part of Talisker's core range of whiskeys from the Isle of Skye. This single malt spent about 18 years in casks, which previously held bourbon and sherry to give a real good complex flavor. It's sweet, it's salty, it's smoky, citrusy, even a little chocolatey when it opens up a little bit. Now, this gives a nice peppery finish. It comes in at 45.8% ABV, and it's one of my newer favorites that I had to add to this list. Coming in at number nine is Ardbeg Dark Cove Committee Release. Now this bottle is just ridiculously good. This is bottled for Ardbeg Day in 2016. The Dark Cove is non-chill filtered and 55% ABV. It blends whiskeys aged in ex-bourbon casks with a percentage of whiskey aged in casks that once held something called Dark Sherry, which is an extremely rare version of the fortified wine. Now this is easily the best peated scotch I've ever had in my life. The level of butterscotch, raisin, cinnamon, honey, roasted almond, and you combine those flavors with the signature Ardbeg bacon and barbecue and smoke flavors, make this an absolute must try. Now I know this was a special release, but these do pop up from time to time, and I have seen this in the store every now and again. I've also seen this at bars with great whiskey selections, so if you're into Ardbeg or peated whiskeys, this is a must try. If you can't find this or never see it, uh, try this one, which is the Ardbeg Core of Yekin. It's classic Ardbeg with influence from French limousine casks, and it's absolutely amazing. Easily my favorite from the core range. Coming in at number eight is Bunahaven 18. Bunahaven has become my favorite everyday single malt scotch with the 12, but when I had the 18, it took everything I loved in the 12 and amped up the flavors to become one of my favorite whiskeys of all time. This is bottled at 46.3% ABV. It's non-chill filtered, uses both ex-sherry and ex-bourbon casks for maturation. This is also a mix of peated and unpeated single malts, but the peat level is barely there. This is salted caramel, raisins, dates, a ton of dark fruits and almonds that coat the palate extremely well. That has a vanilla and sherry oak finish that just begs you to keep taking more sips of this. It's an absolutely delicious offering from Bunahaven that's available and a must try. Next up on the list is Glen Goyne 25. Now if you're looking for a sherry bomb of a scotch, look no further. Introduced in early 2014, this is a 25 year old single malt from the Glen Goyne Distillery and it's part of their core range. Now they use unpeated malt for the whiskey which is then matured for a quarter of a century in sherry casks. This is one of the most full flavored and delicious whiskeys I've ever had. Big notes of sherry soaked fruit up front, raisins, figs, oranges, toasted almonds, chocolate, vanilla cake, even some old leather and some oak flavor as well. This is bottled at 48% ABV, it's non-chill filtered. Definitely a special occasion single malt that you can literally spend hours with. Now unfortunately I don't have a bottle of the Glen Goyne 25 yet, but I had a few pours at bars and through some very generous friends of mine. If you love a good sherry bomb with some age to it, the Glen Goyne 25 is really hard to beat. 
Coming in at number six is Texas Whiskey. It's a category I really wanted to highlight along with Eric Waite and Scott from Scotch Test Dummies. This isn't so much a singular whiskey as it is a category. Texas Whiskey is one of the fastest growing segments in the country. It's unique, flavorful, and has an old school, dusty caramel corn quality, while it still gives full and unique flavors that you won't find anywhere else. Now because of the heat in Texas, these whiskeys age faster and can pack a lot of flavor in a short amount of time but the ones that do it right produce delicious whiskeys. For this selection, I chose my favorite two distillers in Texas and my favorite of their offerings for you to seek out, Iron Root Harbinger and Balcones French Oak. So this bottle of Iron Root Harbinger is a straight bourbon whiskey that's 27 months old and bottled at 57.5% ABV. I mentioned a dusty corn aspect in a lot of Texas whiskeys, and with some it can be overpowering, but Iron Root seems to have found the perfect balance between the Texas whiskey profile and traditional bourbon notes like vanilla, caramel, clove, ginger, and some black pepper. It's sweet, it's spicy at the same time, while never losing its Texas roots. Now, Balcones is another distillery crafting phenomenal whiskeys. Now, my favorite coming out of Balcones is their single malt French oak. Now, even though this is a special release, this year was their second release of this amazing American single malt, and I hope they keep releasing more of this stuff. This is matured in French oak casks and creates a delicious blend of spice and the Texas whiskey flavor profile coming together. Now, the French oak cask gives dark fruits, baking spices, burnt toast with honey butter, and some dark chocolate. If you're looking at either of these, the Iron Root Harbinger is probably more widely available, while the Balcones French Oak is more limited. Either way, both of these whiskeys from Texas are must-tries and true examples of the beauty of Texas whiskey. Coming in at number five is Old Forester Birthday Bourbon. This is an annual limited release bourbon that releases on the 2nd of September each year to celebrate the birthday of Brown Foreman founder George Garvin Brown. Now, each year, barrels are specially selected from the Brown Foreman warehouses to create a rich, and unique bourbon. This is last year's 2018 bottle, which was hand selected by master taster Jackie Zykin and came in at 12 years old and 101 proof. This is one of the best birthday bourbons I've had with deep dark vanillas, caramels, brown sugars, orange, cherry, and some chocolate complexity as well. Now they just released a 2019 birthday bourbon last week, which is 11 years old and bottled at 105 proof. It is limited, hard to get unfortunately, but if you have a chance to purchase a birthday bourbon from Old Forester or try a pour at a bar, it's hands down a unique and delicious bourbon experience. Now since it is so limited, I do want to add that Old Forester makes an incredible bourbon that's a great alternative, which is Old Forester 1920 Prohibition. Um, this bottle has great flavors, chocolate, cherry, vanilla, caramel. Um, it's available and gives you some of those unique Old Forester flavors. Coming in at number four is George T. Stagg. This bourbon is part of the elusive and coveted Buffalo Trace Antique Collection that releases every year in the fall. This is an uncut, unfiltered Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey and is usually about or around 15 years of age. That ranges in proof from 120 to sometimes a little over 140. Now, it's Buffalo Trace bourbon in all its glory. It's full of rich caramels, vanillas, dark fruits, some sweet tobacco, even a little bit of leather. Um, the age on this bourbon and the flavor gives it almost a chewy character to it. It's one of those bourbons that's extremely immersive and can be a different experience for anyone that tries it. Again, this is a limited release as I mentioned each year and these bottles tend to be way overpriced at stores and on the secondary market as well. But if you ever get one through a store or state lottery or can get one in MSRP somehow, it's an absolute no-brainer. Coming in at number three, Wild Turkey Master's Keep. Uh, Wild Turkey is one of my favorite distilleries on the planet and the Wild Turkey Masters Keep series, which has now become something of a yearly higher end offering, has produced some of my favorite whiskeys that I've ever had. There have been four releases including the 17 year, decades, revival, and this year's release which was a rye called the Cornerstone. All four of these have been unique, flavorful, and amazingly well crafted by Wild Turkey and legendary master distillers Jimmy and Eddie Russell. My favorite so far is probably the Revival, which was a bourbon aged 12 to 15 years in new charred American oak, and then finished in 20 year old Oloroso sherry barrels from Spain. Now this year's release was the Cornerstone. It was the first rye in the series and was incredibly impressive in both flavor and an unbelievable finish that lasted for days. Now, the bad news is that these are limited each year, but the good news is, is that I still see some of these Masters Keeps sitting in stores sometimes and definitely offered at bars. I would highly recommend trying any of these four releases if you can. They are wild turkey at its best and some of the best whiskeys Kentucky has to offer. 
Coming in at number two is William LaRue Weller. Like George C. Stagg, this is also part of the elusive and coveted Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. The difference is that this is a weeded bourbon. It's uncut, unfiltered, bottled at barrel proof, and I think, in my opinion, the most popular offering in the BTAC lineup. Now this will usually come in around 12 years old and have varying proof points as well from 120 all the way up to past 140. Now this bourbon is so intense in flavor and full of caramel, molasses, maple syrup, dark fruits. The finish is extremely long and complex as well with sweet oak and intense vanilla on the finish. When I had this bourbon for the first time, I think it was the best bourbon I've ever had and I still think there hasn't really been one that's topped it so far. I could smell and sip this bourbon for hours and it could give me a different experience each time I go back to it. It's an ever evolving bourbon that I love going back to, especially on special occasions. Again, as I mentioned, this is limited, usually on heavy allocation, state and store lotteries, or for outrageous prices on the secondary markets and even in liquor stores. Now the good news is that I've seen this as well in a lot of bars, so if you see it, have never had it, definitely give it a try, you will not be sorry. My final selection is Elijah Craig Barrel Proof Bourbon. If you want a full flavored, well-aged, non-chill filtered bourbon at an affordable price that's absolutely delicious, then this is your bourbon right here. This is aged 12 years at barrel strength. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof has become synonymous with flavor, value, and for me has become the bottle which all other bourbons are measured. For about 50 to 100 bucks, this is available three times a year when Heaven Hill releases their A, B, and C batches. And the batches will vary a bit by proof range between 120 to 140 proof, but they're all absolutely delicious in their own way. This is, in my opinion, what all bourbon should be. Affordable, full of flavor, and available. So stop searching for Pappy and buy this. So there you have it everyone, my top 10 whiskeys to try before you die. Definitely had to think about this list, but hope I was able to give you a good mix of whiskeys that are available with some alternatives as well and some hard to find bottles to seek out at bars or add to your own list of must try whiskeys. Not only are these whiskeys impressive in flavor, but these are whiskeys I love to share. Special whiskeys like this should be shared and enjoyed with friends, family, and anyone else that's never had it before. So if I could add another number to the list, shared whiskeys would be number 11. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Master and Germ Whiskey Room, and I want to thank Rob from Whiskey in the Six for the challenge. Be sure to leave a comment below if you've tried any of these, what your top 10 would be, or check the links below for my other fellow whiskey tubers and their lists. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit that like button. Uh, if you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram and also find me on Twitter. I love chatting with you guys, and as I always say, it is not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. See you next time.